This is code.com, and we're going to assign the correct answer, apparently. Um, let me do this, because that mm, thing moving, I can never pay attention. All right. Find the on event portion of the code for when the user clicks the submit answer button. We will be working on this event for the remainder of the app of app development. To start, we need two local variables, user guess and correct answer. All right. So first, we need the on event block, which is, I'm going to go zoop right here oh no it's this one right because we're looking for user guess and correct answer which we will use to test whether the user answer correctly or not shocking the value of user guess will be assigned with get text oh cool they did that for us so what's happening here is when we hit submit right when we click submit uh this code's going to execute now what happens when this code executes first this variable is declared guess user and then we initialize it to be get text user guess now what is that going to be i'm headed over to design and quiz screen because i bet yep user guest is this box so when i type in here and hit submit what happens is user guest variable is whatever i entered here correct answer is declared here but no value is assigned to it right it just is equal to a variable right now there's no actual value so let's see what we're going to start in order to assign a value to oh, to the correct answer variable, we will craft a conditional. That just means if statement. Oh, right now it does. That we will use the value of the turn variable in order to determine which answer variable is correct. Oh, okay. I think I get this. Yeah, so we already have a variable turn that's going to start out at 1. So I think if we check, hey, what turn is it? If it is turn 1, for me at least, I know that that answer should be Jurassic Park. Okay, so create an if else if else conditional statement that assigns the value of answer one, two, three, and four to the cor variable correct answer. Now notice they asked for the value of answer one, two, three, four. I'm gonna hit upon that again based on the current term. All right, so real quick, I will throw in some blocks because it's nice to use these when we can. It can avoid typos. So I'm gonna go down to if else drag and plop. And then I'm actually going to hit this little plusy thing, and by plusy thing I mean plus twice. Okay, and so now let's see. I need to check what turn it is because if it is turn one, right? If it is turn one, so if turn is this not? Oh, 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 oh. I'm going to use these. Boop. If turn, if I can spell it, if turn equals one and notice there's two equals there's two equals because that's a conditional check we're asking the computer a question here hey my friend the computer at least it's my friend hopefully it's yours too is this true is turn equal to one and if it is if it's currently turn is equal to one it will execute cute whatever we put in here what we're supposed to put in here though is apparently setting the correct answer so cool i'm gonna head over to variables and do bloop now i don't want x i don't have an x variable i have a Correct answer. And remember, case matters. And then, what do I want it to be? Now, students, I am tempted to be like, oh, well, I know it's Jurassic Park. So let me copy Jurassic Park and start writing that down here. That's not actually how we're going to do it. And it's because we have variables up here to use. And these will be helpful if we expand the program or different ways we're going to interact with it. We have these variables. Let's make use of them. It also makes our code more readable. Readable. So I'm going to say answer one, which I know is Jurassic Park. Now let me get the other ones in here as well. So this is actually really nice to read, right? So if it is turn one, the computer says, yep, it's turn one. And what happens? Okay, correct answer will be equal to answer one. What's answer one? It's up here. If it's turn two, correct answer will be equal to answer two, so on and so forth. Let's see what else we got going on here. Hint, try using two uppercase after the name of the answer variable. This will make it easier to compare two strings, two string values without having to worry. Oh, what they're saying is this would only work. Notice all of my answers here are in uppercase. So you want to make sure if you, all of your answers are in uppercase, if the user were to enter Jurassic Park in lowercase, the computer's dumb. We tell it what to do, right? And so the computer would be like, oh, well, lowercase Jurassic Park. Nope, that is not exactly equal to Jurassic Park. However, a little way around that is by using two uppercase. So that's what they're doing here already on the user guess. So that means as long as uh, we use uppercase here, 
then the two will match and that will be fine. This is gonna convert however the user enters the text to be uppercase. Okay, and so this assigns the correct answer. What else do they got for this? Next, we can create if else conditional that checks whether the guess, user guessed equals the correct answer. If so, we will reward a point by incrementing, that just means adding one to the score. Okay, and it looks like that's gonna go here. So I would assume it's gonna be if, and remember we need the two equals because this is a comparison, we're not assigning. Uh, if equals equals correct answer. So if the user guess equals the correct answer, I wanna do score. Now there's a few ways I can do this, but notice we have a score variable. I wanna make sure it's still equal to the old score. So I'm gonna do is equal to the old score plus one. So whatever the new score is, it's gonna be equal to whatever the old score was plus one. Now there's a bunch of fancy ways we can do this, right? You might know uh, score plus plus, that would do the same thing. You might know score plus equals one, that would do the same thing. I like my way, um, just because it's readable for students, but as long as we get the job done. Now, we also need result string. We will concatenate, which means smash two things of text together, the following variables into our string. Previous result string, turn and correct answer. My goodness, that is a mouthful. Okay, so I'm gonna head over to equals again and grab it. So we need the result string. Let me just make sure they've already declared it. Yep, it's an empty string. Cool, so I know I can use that. Heading down here, result string. Now, what do they want it equal to? Well, the result string will be equal to the previous value of the result string plus the turn plus the correct answer. Okay, so I'm gonna do result string because it needs to be equal to the previous value plus turn and plus correct answer. Now the thing I'm missing here is I'm gonna want a new line. So I'm gonna click off. It's really annoying to have to add this after you click off, guys. And I'm doing this on purpose to show you. Go to go show text, it makes it a bit easier. So we need a new line. To tell the computer we want a line break, we don't want all of this on one line, you do in quotes a slash in. And that's the slash under the backspace key, right? And so now this will tell the computer, slam all this stuff together, the result string, whatever I used to have in it, give me a new line, put the turn there, whatever turn we're on, one, two, three, and whatever correct answer currently is. Great. Now, we also will need to concatenate thumbs up or down emoji, whether the user guessed correctly. So, hmm, there's two ways we could do this. I, I'll do it right here, actually. So I'm gonna do a plus, and then since this is if it's correct, and I'm gonna put in quotes here, and all I did up here, guys, is copy this right click copy, control C on a computer, uh, on a PC, command C on a Mac, control C on a uh, Chromebook. All right, now, if they get it wrong, they get no points, so I don't need to update the score, right? But else, I would still need to update the result string. I did control C, paste, and I'm gonna do the thumbs down. So keep in mind how the conditional works, please. And all this is saying, show box, is if this answer is correct, they get one added to their score and we're gonna print out at the end, right? We're not printing this yet, we're just pushing in, we're saving to the result string, the result of this round. So, however, a true false statement, an if statement has to be one or the, an if else statement has to be one or the other. If the user guessed is not equal to the correct answer, if this is false, then the else has to run. The stuff in the if can never run if this is false, right? Maybe the user guessed Fred and the answer was Jurassic Park. Why they don't like Fred, I don't know. Sorry if your name's Fred. All right, so if this is false, bloop, we have to go down here. And now we also add to the old result string, but we give them a thumbs down because we're mean. That is why. Okay, this is all looking good. That was a lot. But yeah, that's all looking good to me. Um, sure, let's go ahead and give this a run. It's still not gonna work though. We haven't done all of it. Uh, park, <laughs> yeah, yeah, nope. All right, onward.